This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Shake Them Ropes, episode 375, Jeff Hawkins, Chris Novembrino, back in the usual place to talk all things WWE, Q3, Saudi Arabia, shows, shows, shows. Maybe we'll get some NWA and AEW in there just to just to ha- be like a sorbet to cleanse the palate a bit. Support from Shake Them Ropes this week coming from Manscaped, number one in men's below-the-belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Get 20% off your order and free shipping using the code SHAKEROPES. We'll be doing a hard sell later because we want that sponsorship ducats in our bank account so that we can keep doing this show. Ain't too proud to beg. Sweet darling, please don't leave. Don't you go. (laughs) Chris, it's been an interesting day, interesting week in the world of the Federation, as I like to call it. Yeah, we'll talk about the shows here in a bit, but it looks like we've got a pretty full docket of news before we get into the Balls report. (laughs) The Beans and Franks report. For those of you with kids, we will give adequate earmuff protection before the hard read. Yeah, you're going to probably want that for that segment. Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, think so. yeah. I think so. I, I, think it was, I would suspect uh, yeah. so. I I can't imagine getting through that read in a child friendly way. No, no, you're gonna want it's, your it's for nudity, that one. but it's tasteful nudity. And I know there's at least one guy who listens to this show in his car with his kids, and it's always that guy I'm worried about the most when somebody drops like a f bomb or something. I'm more worried about tainting Cody's virginal ears. I don't want him to grow up bad. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. So in conjunction with the Saudi Arabia show, Q3 reports and the stock plummets. I stopped listening after George Berrio said, oh, this new network interface. People are very happy with it. I just went, no, no, I'm out. It's going to be a BS call on so many levels. Yeah, I I mean, I think... The stock price has always been artificially high, and there's been this lingering question, at least for me, ever since this went from being a $16 stock to a $32 stock to a nearly $100 stock. What is the real value of WWE stock post this Fox deal? Um, I've actually asked some people you might be familiar with here on the air around the interwebs about this, and my general conclusion, not necessarily theirs, but like kind of based off a conversation with theirs, is that price is probably somewhere between forty and fifty dollars, and this felt like us dropping much, much closer to reality. And it would reflect the fact that the whole theory of pumping up this stock, the whole reason any investor would look at this stock at $32 and say, no, this is a $100 a share company, is the belief that WWE, in the hands of Fox, was going to be transformed into a leaner, meaner, more lucid product that would feel different and feel like a $100 product, not a $32 product. And you can't look at WWE, what they've been putting on TV, their ratings performance, and see anything that supports that narrative. And that's why I think this stock is dropping. The, the great lie right now about WWE is that they are an entertainment company that can be all things to all people and that their product is malleable enough where they can craft it for certain audiences and still be WWE. When the fact is, no matter what, they tell that lie all the time to everyone too. No matter. Well, if you look, uh, this is to your point though, to your point, yeah. uh, the Fox show is Vince's vision of WWE. It's the same vision it's had for 20 some odd years. Vince's vision of the big Saudi Arabia show is the same WWE product there with the exception that Mansoor gets a win here and there. There's nothing different about this product dependent on the audience because his, because remember he's always thought his product is superior to that wrestling stuff. So 
you know, I I kind of view everything. I, I stopped listening to investor calls because it was just one of those things where it's like, I don't want to be lied to. I just don't want to be lied to anymore. Good luck with all that. So in Saudi Arabia, we have a new universal champion, the fiend Bray Wyatt. Um, quick note, neither of us have watched this show because it happened during the day and we both have jobs. And I was waiting to hear what was worth watching. And there were some interesting choices on this show, Chris. Uh, yeah, give me the Korea- report because you know that I, I don't watch for different reasons, but I, I am interested in at least knowing what happened, and at some point I would have to know. So so the payoff to Monday's angle with Umberto Carrillo um, getting beat by AJ Styles as he won a battle royal and got beat again by AJ Styles. Mm. The Fiend is the new Universal Champion beating Seth Rollins. Interesting. Cain Velasquez lost in two minutes and 10 seconds. You to know a what's Kimura. great about that is you, you could see that all on Twitter because the Twitter video upload length is two minutes and 20 seconds, and that fit into the Twitter video length. So I actually saw that match. I am not sure if this is a waste of Cain Velasquez or if this is Cain Velasquez doing some of the greatest pro wrestling ever in terms of getting paid a lot of money to do two minutes worth of work and to get out of there. Cause, I think cause it works good for him, nature. and it works bad for them. Yeah, I mean, they built him up, and I guess they just don't see much, or they're or they're telling people are going to go, Jeff. They're telling a story. Remember the Frank Mir Brock Lesnar thing, where Kane gets beat real quick, and then he comes back, and Layer has a long wrestling match with Brock. I, I, you know, I just go, if that's a story you got to tell, why not give Kane the first win? I, 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 get I, I do I just... actually think there's something to that. I think what we're building to is now Ray is going to teach Kane Velasquez that in a wrestling ring, you have to learn how to wrestle. And yeah. we're going to get into him doing. I, 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 I guess he I he can do off. a Hurricane Rana, right? Like, I, I've heard that. Yeah. yeah he, he, so I could see him learning the 619 and learning, like, the Hurricane Rana. And, and Ray teaches him stuff. And <laughs> it, it's. You're the son I never had. He's going to make him Dominic. And then Dominic will turn heel on him. And then. <laughs> Oh, oh, Kane! I wish you were my son instead of this, instead of Dominic. Oh, why, Dominic? Why can't you be more like Kane Velasquez, a dominant UFC fighter who kills people with his bare hands? Why can't you be more like that? It's like being Jesus's little brother. <laughs> it's a tough gig. It's a tough gig. <laughs> and the War Raiders suffered their first loss. In this tag team turmoil thing to the OC. So the best tag team in the world is Gallows and Anderson. Okay. Cool. I guess. Uh, Mansoor won. Uh, surprise attraction. Uh, Lacey Evans and Natalia wrestled. And it meant a lot to both of them because they were crying after the match and the historicalness of it all. And, you know. Stephanie McMahon will probably get the Nobel Peace Prize or something for it. It's just, I'm like, I get it. I just, I don't buy into the, look how historical we're being right now aspect of it. And if you're going to, oh, yeah, if you, wa- you want to do that, century. yeah, I mean, I, I, Natty is not the person I put in that spot, even though it's like, oh, it's, it's, it's lifetime achievement award every time for Natty. And I, I like Natty. I don't love Natty wrestling. Lacey Evans, you know, I think Lacey Evans is a smart choice because if crap went down, she'd be the one woman who could fight her way out of it. So <laughs> I'm fine with that. It's a show. It's a mini WrestleMania. Uh, oh, Tyson Fury beat uh, Braun by countout when he knocked him out and, and Braun couldn't get up. Good way to protect Braun. I think Tyson Fury should win that to maintain his aura. There's no way he should lose to a WWE guy. You know, it's a show. I may go back and watch it this weekend when I have downtime and I'm cleaning the house, but it's nothing nothing for me worth seeing, but I'll be interested in seeing the follow-up on SmackDown on Friday. What did our boy Monsoor do at this show? Beat Cesaro. Okay, that's right. All right, right how they that? They put him in a match with Cesaro, which, you know, you knew Cesaro was there to make him look great, and that's what he's good at. I, I, don't, I, didn't, get any, I didn't read any opinions of the, uh, of the match, but I don't have any problem with that. 
you know, everybody was like, oh, man, Mansoor's just going to go there to get the cheap hometown win. Good. Yeah, duh. That's, <laughs> do you see what they do to Bailey every time they're the in the Bay Area? That's problem with the show. Yeah, that's yeah. classic wrestling. You run in Birmingham and you give the Birmingham hometown boy a, a win. I, I remember one time Steve Austin was talking about when he was wrestling Bobby Eaton in the 90s in WCW. So Bobby Eaton on his way down, Austin on his way up. And they were wrestling in Alabama. And that night, Austin let Bobby Eaton win. And they specifically kind of flipped it up and made sure to give Austin the heat back at the next show or whatever. But they did it specifically because they knew it was going to be such a pop in that hometown. Like, that's time-tested. And and you know what? That arena that they have this thing at, when it's full and it makes noise, is, is you know, I, I got no problem with that. I mean, oh, it ruins the purity of this. And look what they're doing to Cesaro. Who, Alex Palowski, my friend from Fightful, just had a huge meltdown when this was announced. I was like, dude, what do you think Cesaro is there for? They're never going to do anything with Cesaro. I, I don't understand why people are still in this 2013 mindset of push Cesaro. We're just unfortunately very past that. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but I mean, and I got no problem I, I with that. I don't mean, like it. I, they should They should have done more with this guy, but we are where we are. Yeah. Um. A lot of news coming out of NXT. Um, I guess there was a report that NXT talent were not getting TV uh, bump ups in their. Uh... Sorry, I'm having a bit of a buzzing issue over here. Um, were did not get a raise in pay, I guess, or at least what they were told they were going to get. So that's... yeah, I, my understanding is that they were promised a raise, and that raise is not coming through. And this is at a very inopportune time, considering the other news cycle that they're in. Um, further to that, uh, it was oh, by the way, it was announced at the uh, at the Saudi Arabia show NXT will be part of the Survivor Series matches. Possible three-way dances, I guess, amongst the brands. I don't think that helps NXT. I think right now what WWE really needs to do is have that hard wall between NXT and what they're doing on Raw and SmackDown. Yeah, I I just see them as, you know, losing a bunch of matches to, you know, placate the main roster, quote-unquote, even though NXT is now a... Uh, now a main roster show. And that makes it even more of a mistake because it's the Undisputed Era. So, like, you've been booking the Undisputeds very strong down there. Now they're going to go up on Survivor Series and presumably lose all of those matches. Maybe Roddy comes back with the Intercontinental title? Well, I, I don't think they're going to be doing title changes. I don't think they'll be for belts. Oh, okay. I think it's so just going to be like exhibitions. Just, just exhibitions. You know, that usual, oh, it's a one night of the year. All the brands get, you know, hey, did we just get rid of the wild card that had all this? But um, no, they have another issue, and it, it's going to be a big one because this show is November 24th, 2019 in Rosemont, Illinois. The night before will be the NXT TakeOver event, which will be War Games, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Also in Rosemont, Illinois. You know what happens next week, Chris? What happens? AEW show. Big Thanksgiving show in Champaign, Illinois. Oh, this is, uh, what's it called? Full Gear? Yes. No, Full Gear is uh, the 6th, I believe. I'll look that up. But no, they're, they're also doing like the Thanksgiving night tradition stuff. Okay. Okay, sure. Full, sure. Gear, full Gear is in uh, Baltimore. All right. So WWE goes up there thinking they're cock of the walk to try and kill the territory the week before AEW gets up there. I think it's dangerous, man. I, I do. Yeah, I think AEW as a live event right now, if you are part of the online audience, which would be described as a person who is listening to this podcast or other podcasts on this network, perhaps has a Twitter account for wrestling or a Twitter account that discusses wrestling a fair amount. If you're one of those people and you have money to buy a ticket right now, you are almost certainly going to buy a ticket for the AEW show and not the WWE show at bare minimum because you've been to see a WWE show. So even if you prefer WWE's product to AEW's product for whatever reason, 
you're still probably going to want to go and check out an AEW show, especially right. if AEW is competitively priced or cheaper. Yeah. Um, well, we can get into it now. They, they announced that there's going to be a women's war games match. I think that's an interesting hook. I'm loving, I love that they give the NXT women chances to do great trailblazing things that they gave former NXT generations of women. Um, I'm excited about the match. I, I just, it, it's one of those things where NXT has become NXT war games has become like hell in a cell where it's like, it's November. We're going to have war games again, as opposed to it being like a natural organic solution to an issue. Uh, but we'll get into that a bit. Let's, uh, that's, uh, yeah, they could have booked the undisputed yeah. better for this war games because they have such an obvious one side of the equation. Well, the men's one hasn't even been announced yet. I don't believe. I think it's just kind of be. It's going to be a sort natural. Of did right? Yeah, they. Yeah. I mean, they brought out Tommaso Ciampa as the captain of the other team, and it feels like Riddle and Keith Lee are going to be involved in that. But let's do our bouncing around non WWE stuff after since we've gotten the main roster out of the way. Uh, AEW. Uh, I'm going to say this, and uh, it's a mea culpa on my part because of a generational gap, I think, because we always compare wrestling to the wrestling we grew up with and love. Chris Jericho is Ric Flair in terms of importance, in terms of star power, and even in terms of work rate in his 40s and, and now creeping into his 50s. He's just friggin' magical. And I've downplayed him as just a guy. I know on his later WWE runs, he'd be doing the Chris Jericho cosplay thing where he'd have to do like all the moves, even though he's a little too old to be doing them. But now that he's out and has some creative freedom, he is really on all cylinders. That dude is just awesome. So I'm in a little bit different place than you on this. I think that he is... Better and star powery, maybe even to, I don't want to say flourish levels, but a world champion, heel world champion level, absolutely, right now on the microphone and with his character. The ring work is rough, dude. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, like he's limited. There's a lot of smoke and a lot of mirrors right now. And, and yeah. where he's got it is where it matters, which is on the microphone as a character, as a presentation. But I, I played a little bit of catch up and watched that Darby Allen match. <laughs> Darby did a lot of work. He's not 25 anymore, and he needs to come to grips with that. Uh, you know, Terry Funk did a moonsault, not six during a match at his same age. Um, I, I really liked, cause for our fandom, they had a couple of callbacks to two major WCW things. Um, the jump, the attack on Dustin Rhodes was, and breaking the arm in the car door was straight out of the dangerous Alliance on Barry Windham circa 1992. And the Flair sting or not the Flair sting, but the Flair uh, gene, Starcade limo ride from the Flair Vader match. That was Tony Schiavone and Cody this week. I loved that. I absolutely loved that. Oh my! It may have gone a little long, but I loved that. Yeah, I wish they had more direction with that. I liked that. I I liked when Tony took over too. I thought that was a really interesting writing choice, and it worked. And Tony is awesome. Tony is so Tony's great the on the Tony's my I, favorite I love, thing about this show. Yes, for the most absolutely. Part. He's he's the real star of this show. Cody's okay. Jericho, as I said, I think he's doing fine work and everyone else is but man, I am so glad to see Tony back and loving it. And he's just he is wrestling energy, like, dude. It's awesome. Excal- Excalibur will make a call and Tony will just have this joie de vie where he's just like oh man that's cool that's great that's awesome and then you get grumbling grandpa in between them ah, well we should have not gonna hold yeah it's like oh god he's gotten better okay i'm not gonna totally completely trash no JR. but you know what they need to do on commentary they need to go Mute in him. the direction of <laughs> the audience on this well muting yes. jr would be great but <laughs> it, another way of doing this is lean into the okay boomer stuff and have excalibur yeah. needle jr as the boomer oh, God, yeah no. 
You that just would don't. You don't want. Yeah, yeah, with Jr. I, unfortunately, because Jr. He, can't take a no, joke. No, he can't. He can't take a joke. No, his problem is he can't take a joke. But like, I'm talking about what this audience wants. What this audience wants is for Jr. to kind of like, frankly, get put in his place. It's a little bit. You gotta play to your audience, dude. You, yeah. You, gotta, you, you know, back in the '90s, it was all about stick it to your boss. Now there's a little bit of generational stick it to us, and I think Excalibur doing the OK <laughs> Boomer on behalf of us millennials would be um, welcome, at least from where I sit. Tony saying OK Boomer would be great. That would also actually be really funny. Tony would yeah. actually be funnier from. It was just funny because Dave Meltzer was giving his review of AEW, and I was listening to it, and he's like, there were some who were very upset with uh, with the attack on the Rock and Roll Express and I said, well, after you hung up the, and I said to myself, well, after you hung up the phone with Jr., what did you think of it? Because uh, he'd be the only person to get upset with that kind of heat. Um, they I probably like loved the Rock and Roll that. Express. Yeah, oh, I, they loved it. Yeah, they loved they that. Yeah, are you kidding it. me? <laughs> Like they were all I didn't in think on that, that I didn't think that was gratuitous at all. I, I Ricky, no no way. No, I Ricky I, Morton Price said, Oh, do we do we need yes. all this padding down there? Can, yeah, no, can you Ricky put me Morton through a table probably, or something? He, he probably was pitching firing back up to yes. get thrown down there again. Yes. Because he they and LAX recently worked against each other prior yeah, to the LAX I love that. journey. And of course, Jack Evans is a god amongst men. I love Jack. Give him a microphone already, please. Because he just talks smack and does cool stuff. And that's all I want out of a wrestler is a little. I mean, he's always talking junk. He almost killed himself on that on that uh, twist and uh, stuff out of the ring. That that was a bit scary, but uh, did it with Rhea Ripley this week. She did Rhea it. Ripley. Yeah, too. That's she did one where I was like, I thought she was going to lose her head. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in NXT UK. But love me some Jack Evans. I, I thought they were great. Um you know, another strong show. We'll give a plug to uh, Everything Elite and also Wednesday Night Wars, the two shows on the Voice of Wrestling Network that cover this stuff extensively. But we kind of like to get into our pleasures because this is personality driven, not necessarily uh, not necessarily any one federation driven. We kind of get to swerve in and out of different lanes depending on what we feel like. Chris, we need to talk about Franks and Beans. So parents, time for the earmuffs. Oh, yeah. Put them on, baby, because it is time to talk about them balls. I <laughs> I learned about grooming kind of through <laughs> mistakes, things like that, because I, as I entered my 20s, started losing my hair on my head. It started growing out of every other part of my body. Like a, I, I was like cousin it from the neck down and like uncle fester from the neck up and you know once i started dating which is also a little bit later in life luckily i had some very forgiving partners who would be like dude you need to like trim this and do that you know you can't have the hanging gardens of babylon on the sack you know you, you, the the chest hair needs to be well groomed and things like that but Especially for below the waist, particularly where, below the waist, right? Like no, below no the woman, waist. no, no woman. Yeah, they're not. They're not. They if don't want that. You are trusting your most sensitive parts to somebody else, and you want them to go into that area. That thing better be clean. That thing better be, you know, spick and span, washed, smelling like roses, whatever. Because probably got to reciprocate on the same end, and you don't want to necessarily want to go down to a rainforest either so <laughs> you know it's it's you know, i would it's say just... shave unto others as you would have them shave unto you but that's not actually the way shaving works so you should shave yourself like you'd want someone else to shave themselves and it's dangerous okay it's sensitive parts down there and this is where man this is risky comes business in. risky business baby you know the lawnmower 2.0 way better than the original lawnmower it Dude, this thing's it. awesome. I, like, I pulled great. this thing out of the box last night, and, and I'm sure, guys, you have some sort of gimmick at this point right now to kind of, you know, take care of that, right? You're, you're pulling out some pair of shears, or maybe you've got the guard on a race, and you're like, okay, this is this is working fine. Why would I need to do, bro? We, once you try the lawnmower 2.0, like I was like, oh, it's waterproof. I can take it in the shower after charging it, which is awesome. 
and it has a charge. It, it, they improved the charge. I, I had one of the original lawnmowers, uh, you know, just to give a plug here. I don't need free product to plug your stuff. I just need to trust it. And it, this thing would not hold a charge. It was like 15 minutes at first, but, you know, battery life dies over repeating use. But this new lawnmower 2.0 now has 60 minutes on one charge. So you can like shave more than once. If you forget and you have like a last minute hot date, you can shave down there and stuff. Uh, in more addition, importantly, you can just get more uses out of yeah, the more, battery. That's what yeah. I meant. More yeah. uses. But I mean, they, they, I mean, they have the reviver, which is the ball toner, which is very kind of tingly. And you're like, whoo, whoo, like that. You know, after, after you shave, they have some deodorant you can use. Uh, you like the body wash. Yeah, I like the body wash. It, okay, so the body wash is pH balanced. Uh, a few years ago, we discovered that I have some sort of fairly serious skin condition that they at one point thought was an autoimmune disease, and they've kind of pinned down to a bunch of syndromes. One of them seems to be something about pH balancing in the skin. And, and as such, not to labor you with these stories or give you like horrible images of skin sloughing off my face, although that has happened. Um, one of the things I have learned is that I'm very particular about soaps. And, and you know, I mean, I think if you've tried different soaps, you've probably had this experience too, where some dry out your skin and others not so much, or maybe feel a little bit oily. Like that for me, having the right one makes a big difference. And so we got some of this and I was like, all right, let's see it. I, I took a little pump out of it. I kind of washed it around my hand. It felt right. I did it on my face, and like it was calming, dude. Um, it smells good too. I, I like. I like it. It's got kind of like a cologne smell to it. But this is actually a legit pH balanced soap. And so, if you were someone like me who was probably fairly far on the spectrum of people with like sensitive skin needs and that sort of thing this soap works great for you and if you're like an average person too this is also a very good soap uh, i like this product a lot so right now you guys are probably either <laughs> saying all right we've heard enough tell us where to get it or wondering oh jeff where can we go to get rid of the tumbleweeds between our legs i don't know i think they want a little bit of undercarriage technique from old novi here before we get to the promo code <laughs> okay, fi okay, fine. We gotta, we gotta move along. Fine. Give him the promo code. <laughs> Save some for later. That's true. Uh, we got other vlogs. Yes. To get yours, go to manscaped.com and use the promo code Shake Ropes, all one word. S H A K S H A K E R O P E S. Again, go to manscaped.com. Use promo code Shake Ropes. You'll get twenty percent off and free shipping. That's manscaped.com. Use the promo code Shake Ropes. We thank them for sponsoring this week. We hope they will sponsor us in coming weeks, and they will do that by you going to manscaped.com and using the promo code Shake Ropes. All right, earmuffs off, everybody. How would they know, know that? How would they know to take off the earmuffs? I don't ear know. They, they, uh, they, they I mean, usually they, you approximate. Know, you know that they just listen to the ball talk. I know. I know. I try to get away from the ball talk. You can't get away from it. It's everywhere now. <laughs> we are Manscaped. Essentially, uh, we are Jake Hager- and pummeling the audience who is the other guy against the cage. Okay, I'll give you the choice. NWA, or do you want to hit this Jordan Miles story real quick? Just to We have to hit the it. Jordan Miles story, and I am upset that you no sold that last joke, so we definitely have to do the Jordan Miles story now in penance. <laughs> that was cruel. All right, so this shirt comes out with Jordan. You and I should take a victory lap over this because we said from day one, we found this gimmick problematic. He's smiling, happy to be there, African-American man, and that's all, you know. And that is a gimmick that is purposed for African-American workers in this company. You don't have the white guy who just likes to smile. You can maybe argue that a little bit with Shorty G, but, like, they don't do the he just likes to smile gimmick unless you're a black guy. Yeah. So the marketing geniuses at NXT, which have been making, for lack of a better term, rather lazy shirts, in my opinion. Yeah, they're ugly shirts. Like, And this is kind of across the board here. But the logo for Jordan Miles is in the sh it has a big mouth and Jordan Miles' teeth, and it looks like a smile. The problem is, if you go to the customized shirt site on there, 
and you put that logo on a black t-shirt, it is potentially one of the most racially offensive things WWE has ever done. And that's saying something from this. Moreover, this is a logo that does not work well on the color white or even gray. No, it works well on 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 dark color. It just by working well, we mean to be completely clear here. It juxtaposes the best in the traditional sense because of there's color red scheming. In it. Yes, because yes, the it, red it, the red borders yeah. the white, um, which is laid on top of the black. It's like a classic color scheme that makes sense. Whereas white on white doesn't actually work well at all. So the argument that, oh, this would be available on a white t-shirt, perhaps, but you would design the logo utterly differently if you were going to do it on a white background normally. Now, you do not attribute to malice, that which can be attributed to gross incompetence and blind spots and not seeing it. Unfortunately, what this became was a blame game. And WWE sent out a press release saying the talent had Approved of this? Jordan Miles then releases emails from corporate, thus losing any element of leverage, I think. And then he doubles down and starts talking about ROH yeah, I, and I Jay think Lethal. Before we get into J- Jordan Miles' side, can we go back to the WWE thing real quickly? I, this I, was bad. Yeah, okay. So, and, and I think you're right that it's not, it's not malice in the sense of let's put out something that evokes some of the worst imagery of the 1930s, right? Like, I I don't think that that's what's happening. I think the issue, though, is one that we've been detailing for a very long time here. It goes back to our conversations about the New Day. It goes into our conversations about Bobby Lashley, um, the physical specimen thing and vids ogling the muscles. Like, There is a way that black performers are viewed in this company by the management structure going specifically to Vince, but then you can get into kind of a simple thought exercise here. Who is Vince's number one black advisor in the org chart? Jeff? Like who would be oh, like? I thought I thought you were gonna ask who his hero was. I was gonna say no, Martin Luther King Jr. No, not Martin Luther King. I, yeah, okay. Um, in, uh, in, no, but I'm saying in his organization. In his I have no mid- idea. Right, I don't think he has one. Right, and then who would be the second guy underneath that guy? Because the fact that you don't have those people in the pyramid anywhere, that's where the blindness is coming in. So you're right. You don't attribute to overt malice what you can attribute to ignorance, but the ignorance is fostered. They don't see it because they don't see it. Well, let me let me give another take on this then, because for me, <laughs> one of the worst mistakes I ever made, and I just had a completely lack of clarity and nobody bothered to tell me this. I once went, <laughs> you're going to love this, for a service project. We had to put on costumes and go hand out candy at a hospital for children's wards and stuff like that. Well, I only had one costume. I had worn it on a homecoming parade float. Where'd you go as Jesus? The Grim Reaper. (laughs) And people thought I was being funny, and I had just put on this costume, and I didn't even think about that. It literally did not cross my mind, and nobody bothered to tell me before we got there that it was a problem. They were just, everybody was angry at me afterwards. I tend to think it could be something like that, where they don't, like the marketing people, don't know the gimmick. They don't know anything about that. They just know, okay, it's supposed to be a smile and it's on a shirt and it's, it's for this African-American performer. So they look at it and they go, okay, I see the smile never even crossing their mind about the racial implications about this. Thing. Right? No, no. It's, it's several steps here to get to this bad moment. It starts with having a bias towards certain gimmicks for black talents. So that's how ACH gets saddled with Jordan Miles. He likes to smile. I'm separating the marketing team from the Vince team. Right, no, and th- and then it ends up at the marketing team down the line here. And that's what I'm saying. Right. So, so, you're, so you're right, and, and I, I think that is part of the puzzle here, and I'm not saying the marketing team is malicious. I think, if anything, I, that is the theory I'm least kind of susceptible to. I, I would say that this is much more an indictment on the WWE system and how they view African-American yes. talent yes. in this company. And that's something that you can go all the way back to Triple H and Booker T with. Oh, you can go further back then. Oh, you yeah. Saba Simba. Sure. Kam- Kamala in some ways. 
yeah, the new day to me. I mean, Bruce Mitchell's argument about uh, Kamala's the story presentation of little, little in black WWF Sambo. in specific. Hmm? Kamala's presentation in WWF oh, specifically. Yes, specifically. Yeah. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. But I mean, like Bruce Mitchell's criticism of the New Day gimmick, uh, tying it in with the story of Little Black Sambo, which I remember that book and the restaurants when I was a very little kid, and they went out of business soon thereafter. But you know, the story with the pancakes and things like that. That I mean, that stuck with me, and I realized that. But a lot of people don't even remember that story anymore. But I'm sure Vince did. And, you know, the gospel gimmick when they came back and they were going real heavy on that for a while. Stop thinking about who to blame is in the lyrics. And that's like dropped in right in the backdrop of Ferguson, which is when they launched that iteration of the gimmick. Yeah. Now, let's talk a little bit about the response, because there's a right. Well, I'm going to talk about the WWE's response. The, the, The press release was bad. All you have to do is say. We are sorry about the oversight. We will do better in the future. Please forgive us. Yeah, especially on the Saudi Arabia show week. Yes. Yes. And they, they said, well, the talent approved it. That's not the right answer. Not the right answer. And 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 uh, to, to flip it, ACH releasing emails when if you have a lawsuit or you want this for leverage, you don't release the public stuff because you're winning the war of public relations. Shut up. You know, if you if if you're winning the war of public relations, you don't give ammo for anybody else to to go after you, and then doubling down, going after Ring of Honor and Jay Lethal. The Jay Lethal comments seem very beyond the pale, and it leaves me with questions of what is ACH's end game with all of this? Because it at first, I, and I think I rightfully leverage. so, I thought leverage or a lawsuit. But now, I thought he, but now, I thought I thought he was, was legitimately aggrieved. Yeah, and I think yeah. now he wants to get released. I do think he's upset about it. I do think he's done with the company. I'm sure that he was not happy with the way things were going anyways. Who who would be? I mean, we've been reviewing his push or lack thereof. And then this t-shirt was one more indignity in a series of indignities that has a long story past as we've been talking about here. So I, I get him not being happy about this, but he has handled this in a very poorly. Yeah. I mean, going after Jay lethal, it's hard to kind of spin that as something positive. Right. And, and then, yeah. And then his apology was, I'm sorry, but, and you know, then you, you know, I was angry as this, I was like, I'm like, just, just say, you know, giving excuses for the anger and stuff. All you have to do is say, I'm sorry. I was angry. I said some dumb things. It won't happen. Trying to then explain it away doesn't make you look any better when you've said something stupid. It feels like he's hiding something. Why can't anybody? He's hiding uh, He's hiding the ball a little bit on yes. what his end game is on this. And I yes. think if he was transparent about what he wants, you and I and 85 to 95% of the commentary and the wrestling fan base would be completely on board with it and go, yeah, no, dude, the t-shirt was bullshit, pardon my French, and you should want out of this company and you should want whatever and we want better things for you and no more indignities like this. But the way he's doing this, it makes you go, okay, what is ACH trying to work me on here? Can everybody in the world practice this? I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I'll try to do better and then walk away. Just walk away. Stop trying to explain it. Try, stop trying to spin the bad part of it because the bad part's always going to be there. Just, don't what about to something else and say we need to, to have something yeah, else. mutual accountability for all things. My God, between politics and sports and everything else, it's I'm sorry. Here's a long screed about why what I did was actually correct. And you, no, no. Or, or yeah, that is bad. But also, let us not forget about other things that have occurred. Yes. Oh God. No. Yes. There, there was. And I'll talk about it off the air because there was one that was just knocked my socks. You off already this week. know what I'm referring to. Continue on. I think I do. Yeah. Um. 
Was it? Oh, we got past that. Let, let's do a little NWA before we hit NXT and NXT UK. Into the um, fire! Can I just say, I'm always complaining about wrestling theme songs not being catchy and not having like a hookiness that's about them. Dude, that song is catchy. Like that, that when the first week I was like, okay, that's kind of a fun little throwback theme. Week two, I was like, you know, catching myself kind of like, do, do, do. Like kind of like humming the riff to myself, and then like this week that little opening acoustic guitar riff came in. I was like, I love this. It gave me like that little vibe of nostalgia. It's a well produced track too, especially for that sort of vibe. I can't believe in the year 2019, I am excited about a song by the band Dawkin. You, yeah, well, yeah, Dawkins. My generation. Um, I was not a metalhead, though, so, but uh, no, I enjoy They're like it. They're barely metal. They're like kind of like pop yeah. rock back in the day. Yeah. Well, they're packaged metal. Yes, yeah. They're, uh, poison. You know, that kind of... Yeah, I, 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 it, it is metal, but it's... Like, that was heavy pop rock. Kind of like Nickelback's yeah. like pop rock, only of a different generation. This was the first week... Of NWA power, and I still love everything about this, especially, you know, just the presentation where I was a little little draggy. Yeah, I felt you not just draggy, but I was a little confused as to the battle lines because everybody's I thought there might be a little bit too much shades of gray here, especially with that James Storm, uh, Nick, all this Colt Cabana, Eli Drake confrontation because you know eli's working his angle and nick aldis is kind of a heel but he's supporting colt in a thing against james storm so his enemy and my enemy is my friend but you know that james storm is an actual heel and so is nick aldis in many ways but nick aldis isn't quite the heel so i love maybe nick they aldis have- the the sadistic streak that he has of i want you to put everything on the line because i want you at your best is such a great like baby face great fakeness it, it's it's a great heel line but it's for james storm who's a heel and you're kind of like he? okay you, he, he is he, he teamed is. with wild card in the six man yes, right right uh, yeah i know i i mean i'm with See, you like i i, said, I, I don't like lines. i don't like the wild card inclusion although it makes sense but yeah i, I like colt has been antagonizing james storm and james storm is surly but has not actually been doing anything particularly heelish. You're really beating up on baby faces. He has been in a tussle with Josephus. Colt Cabana came out last week and tried to make fun of James Storm and James Storm. I mean, we're in the South here. James Storm stood his ground. Like, uh, you know, I I don't actually see that as like a heelish sort of thing. And he still but has all this. Ca- all this came out and said, "At a boy, Colt, you know, I support you and everything." And, and Colt right. took that genuinely. So I was kind of like, "Okay, what's this?" So it was just some blurred line stuff. Um, I don't hate it, just- but I need a little more yeah. resolution, and I want to know. I want to be behind someone clearly. I don't. I don't mind the shades yes. of gray for a lot of people, but the one thing I'm having a problem with right now is there's no one on the card. I am 100% behind. Even Tim Storm. I like Tim Storm, but they keep showing me that low blow, and I go, hmm, I don't like the fact that when his back was against the wall, he went low. Yeah, we got a question um, about what we thought of Ricky Starks and Aaron Stevens, and I'm kind of the same way. Ricky Starks doesn't come off as a baby face No, No, he was cocky last week, and he's cocky with his moves, and he's always talking about how pretty he is and how he's like the hottest thing. In a lot of ways, I actually think they kind of missed the boat with Aaron Stevens as the top baby face. That like yeah. it's weird. It feels kind of contra in this universe, especially since his gimmicks like silence and you're welcome, but there's like a fan favorite familiarity and a comfort that he has on the microphone that I actually think would juxtapose really nicely with Nick Aldis. He's a, he's a good he's a right now he's comedy mid card heel. Is what he is yeah. when, when you thought he might be a little bit higher on the card. And I don't mind him in this position. It was just a weird pivot from his first introduction. He felt like to, a star that first week. He felt like a star the first week. And then when it started with the uh, avert your gaze away from me stuff, you just kind of went, meh. That, that's, that's some Hollywood Bob Holly stuff we're getting into now. 
Um, happy to see Ashley Vox back. I love Team C Stars. Uh, I hope her sister comes in too because they are just they're adorable and great. I'm not the biggest Marty Bell fan in the world. The women's division in NWA to me is a little lacking, to be honest with you. Uh, although Thunder Rosa is kind of a welcome addition. I am really excited to see Thunder Rosa do her thing. I think, frankly, the sooner they can get the belt on her, the better. Yeah, yeah I think that would probably be the improvement in the division here was here. My, here's my bridge too far this week on the NWA, which I love the kitschy. I love the throwback. I love Dave Marquez. The way he interviews the is way so Dave, conversational. Yes, it, it, there's also like, his cadence in his voice is it's it's fun and it's a different voice in wrestling. Uh, everyone in wrestling, especially in the WWE system, everyone has to talk like this tonight, and you definitely have to punch your words. And Dave Marquez is very laid back on his voice, and it's yes. just a nice change of pace to the point it will throw you off during the ring of introductions. Yes, yeah. I mean, because, because, you know, everybody's trying to be, you know, a buffer brother in the WWE. Okay. You know, you know what I really like, enjoyed this week? What was a nice touch is after the powder spots. Dave, okay. We're going to talk about the powder spot because that's what was a bridge too far. For but me. Dave Burke Go has on. coughing afterwards no, as see, he was doing I, the announcing. I liked that a lot. I rebelled against it. This, this is, this was my bridge too far. It was, it's like in Smoky Mountain back in the day when they use the old, rag gimmick and the, and the announcers would say oh you can smell the ether from up in the in the galley and stuff like that i'm like come on man and spill an entire barrel drum of ether and nobody in the audience is choking and coughing so you can't be doing the choking and coughing gimmick to being 40 feet 30 feet away from the ring when the powder goes up i'm sorry that's a bridge too far for me it's too kitschy. It's you get too... the powder over, Jeff. You get it over. Dave Marquez, I get, I get you the, soldier on. Don't listen to reasoning. Hawkins. I get the reasoning. I get the reasoning. I, I just can't go there with Coronet being that far away and coughing along with Dave Marquez. I, I just couldn't. I would be fine with just Marquez. I forgot about Coronet coughing. I Because I, yeah. I don't have a sense of where Marquez is. Like, I, I assume that he's closer to the ring than Coronet. No, he's right next to he's right next to the broadcast table in the in – the, uh, in the interview area back there. And, and here's the thing. The powder wasn't even the closest corner to that spot. It was the furthest corner away. So the powder traveled all the way across the ring, all the way to the interview spot in a matter of seconds and was choking him. I'm I just sorry. Went, no. I can't, I can't hear you because it is still real to me. Damn it. <laughs> but it's a breeze to watch in an hour. And if you're not, it's a nice double feature with AEW dark, which is also really fun to watch. Uh, one thing no real- that I think they need on power, and, and we'll see how this series unfolds, is they do need more people of color, and they do need to be kind of... I, I mean, I like, you know, Eddie Kingston and Homicide here, but I, I think, you know, having a good black baby face would be a nice little breakup in the card here, too. Okay. I'm, I'm fine with that. I just think they need to walk before they run. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I mean, they have other things to address, too. Uh, but, like, yeah, I'm, we're talking about a pure baby face here. Maybe that's actually the nice slot here, you know? You know? I'm fine with that. That would be great. I, I, I just, it's one of those things where I was trying to think, okay, who's, who's ready for that kind of spot, even though NWA isn't really, look, it's a, it's a bare bones operation, but the wrestlers are still highly skilled. Mostly. Uh, I'm not so sure about the, the Dawson brothers. They're, they're, you know, they're good brawlers. Yeah. They're good, they're good brawlers. brawlers. Yeah. They, and they're willing to take a beating. They're big. Yeah. They're big. Um, so NXT UK or NXT, I think NXT UK, you probably want to start with cause it's the shorter of the two shows. Sure. Okay. Let's begin with NXT UK here. So we had Piper Niven and Rhea Ripley defeating Jazzy Gabbard and Ginny. The spot I'm sure you want to talk about was Woo. my favorite spot was just Ginny getting beaten up mercilessly by these two. She could take a beating. That's she what I really take like a about beating. Ginny. This is what made me, I mean, in addition to everything about my proclivities about uh, snarky ethnic women, um, in the matches I saw when she first came to the States, she was just getting ragdolled by Tony Storm and others, and she was just great at that. Rhea Ripley almost died. And to me, it's a little bit of knowing what you can do and can't do. 
and As should opposed do to, and I'm going to try this do. should do. Yeah, I don't want to see her doing that every week. I want to see her doing that in a big match and maybe trying it and hopefully hitting it and then putting it away for a while. But in an I under 10 to... minute opener match on NXT no, UK, exactly. why are you doing that spot? She did that in war games. I'd be fine with it. Doing it here against Ginny and Jazzy. Not so much. Kind of interesting. They got the uh, pin on Jazzy. Yeah, I'm, they. I don't have the same vision for Jazzy Gabbard that we that, did originally. Or yeah, it's that changed. we do. Yeah, or, it or changed. it's changed. I, I don't know which, but I think plans may have changed. Maybe, maybe Jazzy's finishing up. Maybe they're going to put her over on uh, NXT in the states and have her come in because she was over like Rover with the uh, full sale crowd. That is that true. Could, that could be happening. Um, okay. Next, we had a kid defeating Cassius Ono. I totally forgot that a kid was debuting this week, and I was like out of the room when they were doing the intros or whatever. And I came in and I was like, "Who's Cassius Ono fighting? And why is this squash match so competitive?" And then a kid gets the win, and I guess you know, I I guess it got him over. I it, it's no, it's it a thing. Didn't. It didn't. He, he gets I beat up. He gets he got saved beat by, up too much. Same here. And then Tyler Bate comes out, makes the save, and oh, the star's giving him the rub. No, I, I just, I couldn't get behind it. I liked the match. Uh, you know, Cash Ono's fantastic as usual. Love the way he started with "Who are you?" Kind of in the corner, like he wasn't even gonna fight him. He's just like, "Why should I come out and fight you?" You know, I liked that. Um, <laughs> for some reason, I loved Tom Phillips and uh, Nigel here with Phillips going, oh, good, an American on the show. <laughs> so, yes, the jingoism is strong, even even outside of the U.S. Oh, it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, you know, it's the language barrier, you see. Uh, Tom, Tom, Tom fits this show with Nigel, I think better than, uh, Vic does. Yeah, he does. It's cause Tom is looser and Tom knows how to have a little bit more fun with him. He is so loose on this show though, compared to what, how yeah. he was on SmackDown. It's almost like a vacation for him. I'm, I'm really, he'll make so, certain jokes and, and you can just see Nigel going, I'm not going to touch that. Cause I actually have to go to the States and work with, uh, with people who actually watched the shows, so I don't want to get myself in trouble. Tom goes, I've been demoted, so I don't care anymore. <laughs> and it, it's almost refreshing. Let's see how long that lasts. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I liked Killer Kelly's little promo backstage here. Yeah, the uh, just they do little things like that where it's like people are crossing and it just so happens. I, I did like the just put the mouthpiece in and go, I'm going to go start a fight. I was like, okay, cool. Made and Isla Dawn's the perfect person to feed to her. Absolutely. Um, although it's like funny because, you know, I'm watching her do this promo and I go, I, I know she's a heel, but like her logic is too sound. You don't yeah. get a match around here unless you have beef. I, I, I think so. Yeah, it's so weird because I didn't realize it's been four months. I thought, was she the one who sold out Zaya Brookside to Jazzy? Yes. Or am I thinking yeah. of somebody else? Yeah, yeah, okay. she did. Yeah, she did. So, yeah, I mean, she's been operating mostly as a heel and only ever as, like, like a slight baby face or slightly yeah. baby face-ish. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, but it's also, you know, cool to occasionally give baby face or heels a human side as opposed to, you know, mustache twirling. Mm, crazy thought. Joseph Connors had another match oh, against a debuting guy again. Well, he he didn't debut. He debuted during that UK title tournament or one of the tournaments here, and he's now coming yeah, back. Back in early just, 2017. It's late 2019. I just don't understand. Was it Big Wave uh, yes. Johnson? Whatever. I forgot his first name. But yeah, Joseph. Roy Johnson. Why do you debut people just to lose? Especially to Joseph Connors. Why is Joseph Connors on a super push? Is this... I blame you. I think that they're doing this to troll us. Spite me? Yeah, no, it's it's mainly because of you. I, of course, have been very um, measured in my commentary on Joseph Connors. No, they take they take my good ideas like Alexander Wolf and this old... And, and uh, you know, what he's been doing backstage, which is a promo that I thought was pretty good. But yeah, I just it, They're my, doing the, this to spite you, but it's punishing me and it's really unfair and I think you owe me an apology. 
No, the best part of this is Nigel yelling at Joseph Connors. You're doing great because nobody knew who Joseph Connors was talking to. Yeah, I, I, I did actually enjoy Nigel engaging with Joseph Connors, but I do not understand why this Adam Rose Team this knockoff. Team guy with Shane Thorne already. Team him with Shane Thorne so nobody knows who either of them are. Stop pushing this Adam Rose knockoff on me. They'll be, they'll be, they'll be the new Blake and Murphy. Which one's which? But we, okay. Uh, Kaylee Ray came out, like, Joseph Connors didn't even really get to suck in his victory. He actually got to watch a little bit of Kaylee Ray's Titan Tron come on as she came out. And then she came in and cut a promo. I actually liked the promo. I thought it was fun. She does the bad verbiage very well, and her accent helps. Yeah. Because her accent is awesome. Because she, she drops certain consonants and stuff because of the Scottish accent. Scottish. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I thought she was great. She buried Tony Storm, who I believe is going to be. I think she'll probably end up being on this next NXT regular takeover in some fashion, if not Mia Yim as part of the war games. But um, and then and then uh, went after Zia Brookside, who everybody, every heel should be going after the plucky young baby face always, you know, to put the target on that cuties back and just go after her so i'm i'm fine with that i thought that was pretty good gallus cut a promo outside of the arena they talked about how dug this yeah i like this i thought this was good i loved and this goes to our conversation last week i loved the framing that once wolfgang stopped talking they edged the camera over to just show the coffee brothers and talking about yeah talking about you know it's time for joe to re-debut and stuff i thought that was kind of cool they're kind of subtly hinting that wolfgang's you know gonna be edged out but no i love the feud with uh imperium this is cool with me yeah i i mean i like i like that it's gallus versus the world they they hate everyone uh and that's they're the jerks they're, yeah. they're the jerks everybody hates especially those coffee brothers those guys are jerks and then we had Jordan Devlin pinning Dave Mastiff. I liked this match. I thought that this was a pretty good chopping down the cherry tree match. I thought that Devlin needed to target a limb more during this match. Not only that, I, I agree. He needed to be a little bit more sadistic and cocky. Tactical. I think he ne- tactical. I think he also needed, after the match, to kind of... And I know I use this a lot for every kind of heel in this position, but the the Tully Blanchard style over celebration of a win, you know, where it's just like, oh, this is the greatest win of my career type. He needed some sort of flair after the match to give himself a little bit more personality after winning to just get as opposed to, hey, he won a hard fought match clean, which he did, which was great. You know, kind of the, yeah, he won clean, but you're not supposed to like him still. Yeah, still it's weird. I, this match, if you're turning him babyface, is a good structure for the match. If you want to keep him heel, I would have had him work on Dave Mastiff's leg immediately. Like his his leg and one of his hands so that he couldn't really punch and that he couldn't really keep up with Devlin and have Devlin making fun of him and continuing to just work on that leg and work on that leg and trying to lock in submission holds. And like eventually then he gets whatever the finish is, whether it's actually involving the leg or if the leg and the faulty leg leads to Devlin being able to hit the Devlin side. Uh, I think that's a better match if you're keeping him heel. If you're making him a baby face, this is an okay transitional match. So let's move on to NXT. Um, circling back to the main roster real quick, just to give an interest here. Kyrie Sane this week. Um, actually, all the women. There was a lot of punching women in the face this week in terms of potatoing people. And it makes for tougher matches, which is quite good. I loved the Kyrie saying Becky Lynch opener on raw. It's pretty much the only thing I liked on that show, but I loved everything about the women on this show. 
for the most part, up until Regal made the announcement of War Games, which I thought was unearned. I think there needs to be a few more weeks of chaos before he goes, all right, I need to get War Games in here to settle this. Especially if you're going to say it the way he says it every time, where it's like... War Games! Yeah, he's... War Games! It's like he's fed up. The way he says it... It's he's disgusted with the chaos that has been going on here. There has been too much bullshit for too long, and there's only one way to clean up this mess, war games. And this week I felt like they wanted to have this week three angle with all of the women, and I they were doing it on week one. Io Shirai and Candice LeRae really enjoyed this match. Absolutely. LeRae gave me hitting. bloody nose into it. Yes. I mean, all these all these potato shots helped these matches this week because these women aren't these dainty flowers, even though you know, Kyrie Sane playing heel. It's like, God, that's the cutest thing I've ever seen. I'm a heel. You know, <laughs> it's like, OK, cool. You know, it's like when she was playing pirate, but uh, she's a vicious she she's a chicken hawk. She, she's the vicious small person trying to show you how vicious he, she is. But the EO should go back to EO Shirai and Candice LeRae. I love this feud. I do. They, they've been great in the cage match here. I mean, did they do a cage or they did the uh, they did the takeover match. I mean, I, this feud has been really, really great. I think EO Shirai, I, I liked the poppy entrance, but it was way too baby face for my taste, even though she uses her song. You know, having the band out there and coming out there with her. But uh, yeah, this match is hard hitting. Awesome stuff. Candice LeRae is a very graceful flyer. Um, whereas Io Shirai is a very powerful flyer, which is a nice contrast in styles. Um, this feud must continue, and I'm happy it is. I hate, 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 hate the commercial in the middle of the match convention. Yeah with the picture in picture thing it is hurting my eyes like i can't watch you're it you're not it's you're distracting not getting the feel of you're also not getting the feel of what's going on during the match even though it's a heat spot you're not you know you're not engaged with it cuz you're listening about you know diarrhea medication while while the crowd is chanting something while somebody's in a headlock or something i i I agree with you. I hate the picture in picture gimmick. Yeah, the sooner that goes away, the better. I get why they think that's a good thing, but really, all it's doing is making me go back to skipping. It kills the those. flow. It yeah, kills it kills the, the flow. flow. Yeah. Then we had Finn Balor come down, and he was shooting, brother, because he laid down for the hottest thing in the business, or what was supposed to be the hottest thing in the business. Did they write this promo and have no idea that they're putting the belt on Bray Wyatt like on Thursday? I don't know, but I hated that part of the promo. I, it's, it was a bizarre beat, and it's even weirder now that Bray Wyatt's champion. It was a Vin, that first half of that promo was a Vince Russo promo, where where it's like I laid down for him, brother. It was in the script. I'm like, oh god, don't don't break the fourth wall, man. You got beat. Just say just say that, and that you're coming back hardcore and getting in touch with your roots. And whatever, man. The second part of this promo I love, but that first part talking about laying down for the guy in the mask. You're you're burying him and you're you're exposing the fourth wall and it doesn't sound as cool as it did in nineteen ninety nine. And this promo only works in an NXT that is really being kept sovereign from the main brand. Like this it's, Vince yeah, or this it, Finn it Balor works. character is sort of meant to be like I'm not I'm not the main roster Finn Balor. So like you almost can't have this Finn Balor go back to the main roster do anything on the main roster for I'd say at least a year. Yeah, it's meta commentary Finn Balor, which I don't I don't want. No, want and they don't be, have the discipline to pull it off anyways. I want to be, I mean, look, go back to the Prince Devitt character and and draw on that a bit more. Uh, that's that's what people want. I think so. and I think we're getting a little bit more of that. He did. He even said Prince somewhere in here. Yeah. yeah so I, I think we're going to have him change that. his name. Have him change his name from Finn Balor like they did on his intro. He's going back to Prince Devitt. I'd be cool with that. As a bad guy. I'd be cool with that, too. Then he went on. He talked about Johnny Gargano. I thought this part was good. Uh, I love, yeah. I love no, the line. I'm going to make you Johnny watches wrestling. I was into that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Then after that, we had a real who cares of NXT with Bronson Reed defeating Shane Thorne. Yeah, I liked it. I didn't love it. It got, got Bronson Reed over yeah, a bit. Yeah, that's paid off clearly on, the project they, they here. Were paying off on, but they were paying off vignettes from like three weeks ago that nobody remembers. Right. And I mean, they, they want the goodwill to still be there from when he lost to Matt Riddle a couple of weeks ago. Right. So you're trying to rebuild right. the guy. I, that, that, that's the other problem here is I, if he had had a win or even just a double count out against Matt Riddle that had resulted in them broing, that I think would put him in a better place than him beating Shane Thorne this week. Yeah, of the, of the two quote-unquote squash matches, this is my least favorite. Then we had the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, the Kabuki Warriors, against Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai. So... I Go for love it. this match. I think yes. that Asuka and Kyrie are awesome. However, this match was booked horribly in the context of this crowd because there was absolutely no way you were ever going to get Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai over because this crowd was always going to treat Asuka and Kyrie Sane as baby faces. It doesn't help that Asuka's kind of unhinged character likes to play into the audience and does it in a heelish way to get into the head of the baby face, but the way that she does it still has the result of fostering the crowd reaction even more, thus inverting the baby face heel dynamic even further on this fledgling tag team of Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai, who I don't think got anywhere near the amount of offense that they needed to get during this match. I'm fine with the Kabuki Warriors cheating and doing the mist, but the Kabuki Warriors were also driving the car for most of this match, and it should have been completely the other way around. It should have been Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai chasing the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka having to regroup Kyrie Sane, Asuka and Kyrie only momentarily thinking they're in control of this match, and Team Kick is taking him to the limit, so Asuka's finally like, all right, Kyrie, step aside, miss time, and hits her with the mist, and that's how they get out of this match. Instead, it really felt like Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai got played. All right. Um, I agree. I loved this match. Uh, I agree. The crowd did not play its role properly, and I don't usually crowd chain, but I'm going to crowd chain full sail because full sail is going to be the normal house for NXT for a couple more months. We get that you're happy that they're back, but they're heels. Play your role. Boo them after you say welcome back after the chant. Just boo them because because they need that to succeed. Otherwise, you're going to turn them baby face and they're not going to know what to do with them. Plus, so they're also the visitors. The, these are the yes. WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. They're not the NXT Women's Tag Team Champions. Yes. That said, that promo video for the Kabuki Warriors before the match did more for the Kabuki Warriors in that entire main roster run that they've had up there. That thing was awesome. It made them hard hitting. It made them killers. It it was it was like a promo music video that they used to do back in the territory days to hype people. It was all of their highlights, and it was awesome as hell. And I I just watched. It. I went, holy crap! Now I want to see them kill somebody. And that's what you want out of that crew. Let's give some love to Tegan Knox and 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 Dakota Kai. Um, Tegan Knox is the person who should be getting the hot tag out of this. The interview that they had beforehand was great. This is one of the better Dakota Kai outings I think they've had. I just thought the heat segment went way too long on her. You've got to justify the heels using the mist. And it, I, my big problem is that Asuka and Kyrie didn't really ever feel like they were in any serious danger. Yes, yes. You'd never believe that they were going to win. If they had given... Near falls? There were, Lots of near falls? Tegan Knox well, and Dakota? No, no, I think no. so. I, not, hard hitting offense. More yeah, hard hitting offense tandem, from them. Tandem they, maneuvers from the baby faces on, yes. on Kyrie Sane getting into two counts. Asuka is having to keep bailing out Kyrie Sane. Eventually, Asuka has to stop the bleeding and does it by doing the mist. There needs to be a reason for them to do the mist. Yes. No, I, I agree with that. I, I think there were a few segments where they got some nice... Offense in, I think there needed to be a little bit more. And yes, the double teams would have helped make them show that they are a cohesive team. What is Team Kick's finishing move? Yeah, exactly. And that's we, we mentioned this. They needed the squash match beforehand to, to do this. They, they needed to kill somebody first. But the handling of the missed spot, I think, was the best that they've ever done with the handling of a missed spot for the most part. Number one, the facial features of Dakota Kai... 
and the amount of mist she took on her face. Oh my god, she was she, was she looked like that mist. She looked like the Wicked Witch of the West. She looked like El Faba from Wicked. I mean, she because she has the triangular face and just the green all over it. I mean, and it hit her good. And she sold it like a million bucks because she fell forward as opposed to backwards. So the ref couldn't see it. Then the north south pin by Kyrie Singh. And the way that they to called cover it the too. face. They called yes. it and made sure to cover that. I love that. Now, the problem was as soon as she got up and Dakota Kai was asking for a towel, why doesn't the ref do something? I mean, I, I get that criticism, but for the missed spot itself. It was one of my favorite miss spots I've ever seen. There was a Muda one. I forget on who. I'm thinking Eddie Gilbert. Oh, it's the Eddie Gilbert Missy Hyatt one, which was just as good. But this one I really, really liked as well. Um, the, 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 the heat spot went a little long. It could have cut a few minutes off of this, and they could have given Team Kick a bit more offense, but I loved this match. I loved... I love the aftermath of it where it degenerate into chaos. I just think they need to break up the chaos for another week or two. Keep going back to the chaos to the point where Regal comes out and goes, I can't take this anymore. I need a way to solve this. All right, ladies, you're getting a war games match so we can settle all of this. I love As that opposed to him when just I said it out. earlier, Hawkins. Yeah, no, I, I I know. I'm I'm just reiterating. I think, <laughs> I think again, but we need to also shame the crowd a bit because the crowd knew what was coming, and we're chanting war games before Regal ever got there. And I think no, and they think they're so smart. They think they're ahead of the action on this stuff, and they don't think insult them like no. that. Don't don't do that. I just think they need to play their role better. They they know so much, and they are aware. Because they're in line all day and they're talking to each other and they're hearing things and seeing things. Well, and and you know it's things. war game season and all of that stuff, but yes. you can't war games after war games is announced, not before it. Agreed. Next, we had Cameron Grimes defeating Tyler Bates. Uh, they have interesting plans for Cameron Grimes. I don't think they have plans. I think they just put him in there to be a good wrestler. And they took two young guys, put them in there together and said, you know, have a nice sprint. And it was pretty good. I thought I I loved watching these two together. Yeah, I agree. You know, Cameron Grimes is sneaky young. I think he's still 22 or 23. Maybe a little older. Maybe I'm forgetting. Maybe, maybe time has passed me by to, because he was always the young guy in PWG, but, and Tyler Bates still very, very young too. And uh, they obviously see something in him and continue the thing with uh, Pete Dunn and, and Killian Dane. I am interested in this Angel Garza repackaging. It looks like we're going a different direction with this guy because I think so. I think we are making him a baby face. I, I, I think that he will still have the preference for the ladies of the crowd over the men of the audience. But this whole, I want to do this for my family. I want to be like Uncle Hector. That is the tradition stuff that reeks of baby faceness. It does. And it, and it was played beforehand when he was a baby face. This is an old video package, I believe. They just they've just rebroadcast it on TV. Well, even that's a choice, and maybe it's a lazy choice, and we shouldn't read too much into it. But I tend to think that they actually do intend to do something with this, and that they like him. They see him as a future talent. They should. Yeah, I, I think so too. Yeah, I actually like him as the heel. To be honest with you, I think he's a little bit better playing. You know the the uh, Lothario who doesn't like men, but will always take time for the women. But they might like well, can, Angel re- and you Umberto can... together, and they don't want to do the Angel-Umberto feud yet. Yeah, well, you can always, you can repackage this as a babyface where he's still a Lothario to the women. And, you know, he's kind of complimentary to the men, but he really doesn't pay them any mind. But he's still charming, so you still like him, as opposed to snark at him. So I, you, I guess he could do this as babyface. I just, I viewed this as them liking him but they're but and they had this video package in the can so they decided to replay undisputed it. era defeats keith lee and matt riddle keith lee and matt riddle just no tag team chemistry with these guys and, and which is odd because i believe they were pwg tag team champions were they really at one time wow yeah let me let me take a look at that i believe they were 
Maybe I'm thinking Jeff Cobb. It was not. Move. It was not coming off in this match, dude. Yeah, but this is the best Keith Lee we've seen so far. I think in in NXT. It it looks like they've decided to tell him to that he doesn't necessarily have to have big guy offense anymore, and he's kind of has the uh, the shackles taken off of him. I thought I, I liked Keith Lee in this match a lot. I, I'm I'm a little bit there with you with the with the chemistry thing. I love I love Undisputed Era. I, Fish and O'Reilly are like my two favorite members of Undisputed Era. I could watch these guys like wrestle yes. a lot of stuff. They're just I have a very very strong preference to the way this tag team wrestles, tag team matches, their wrestling style. I love the synthesis of the MNA and the striking and the wrestling. You just you get a lot of variety good match tactics and good match flow from fish and O'Reilly that other yes. tag teams who are top level tag teams and other companies, even um, I, I like them, but I don't think that they tell a story as cleanly as fish and O'Reilly do. Yeah. They, they are a modern style team where I'd like them to be a little bit more brutal in their style throughout the match as yes. opposed to just the ending sequence that that's my only issue with fish and O'Reilly. It's always been my issue. Other than Bobby Fish's hipster attire that he wears outside of the ring, um, <laughs> but yeah, I like that. I was a little surprised they put the uh, they put the uh, pin on Matt Riddle. Yeah, I was surprised on that too. I, that I mean, if anything, yeah, Keith Lee seems like so, the perfect candidate for that. I am not sure if these war games are going to be teams of five because I would think they'd put Undisputed Era and Finn Balor against Riddle, Lee, Gargano, Ciampa, and maybe Dijakovic. I don't know, uh, like, because they kind of ended it with the undisputeds on one side, so you got four, and then you had Champa, and then Riddle and Keith Lee, and you feel like those guys are going to be involved in it. Um, but yeah. but they also kind of left themselves tentative with that. The only thing I think for certain is Champa's definitely on the babyface side of this. Yeah, and they were teasing on social media that Dijakovic would be somehow involved in it. I don't know, but. Uh... Yeah, I'm hoping they've uh, I'm hoping they've tweaked the style of the presentation of war games. That, that we'll get to that in the f- next few weeks. I I am not a fan of locking everybody in cages and releasing them one by one. I'm I'm really not. I just you know let's just let's just do war games, kids. We don't need the spectacle. We don't need to WWE it up. But um, a fun show. I thought I thought both shows on Wednesday night were really great. Even though they both got killed by the World Series. But I want both those shows to succeed. I don't want one to beat the other so handily that Vince has to come in and make changes to NXT. I'm I'm really enjoying both. Wednesday night is fun. Tuesday night is fun. And Thursday watching NXT UK is fun. So um, if you like wrestling, those are those are our picks. You can follow me at Crap Game 13. You can follow Chris at Chris Novembrino. You can follow the show at Shake Them Ropes. Once again, we'd like to thank Manscaped for their sponsorship this week. Go to manscaped.com slash shake. No, not slash shake them ropes. Use the code shake ropes. Shake ropes. All one word. No space in between. Get 20% off your order and free shipping. Chris, for some reason, likes to torture himself watching politics and 70 sitcoms. And does oh, actually the 70 sitcoms are pretty good. Politics, not so much. But he also does podcasts about them. He'll tell you about them right now. Okay, so don't worry. TV is where you can find the world's greatest, so the country's greatest news and politics show. Uh, that's it. Don't worry. TV. Don't worry about the government. It's his name. You can find it on iTunes and Stitcher. My other show is the All in the Family podcast, the premier show that looks at All in the Family, the 1970s hit sitcom. Puts it into context in a little bit of history, a little bit of politics of today, a little bit, a little bit of that. Mostly a look at the plot and stuff. If you like Chris breaking down plots, there's a lot of that too. So you can check that out at allinthefamilypodcast.com. Chris plots is about plots. Wubba lubba, dub dub. <laughs> <laughs>